Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Hey, good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. This is David, Take Two Radio, Soaps and Review. And with me tonight, so far, I have Anthony and Will. Hey, hey, hey. Will here, Party Will. It's great to be back. And we are waiting for the girls to come in, and I don't know what is keeping them right now. Well, well in the I meantime, just to throw a quick little quick announcement for y'all. Um, for all of us for Take Two Radio, we want to congratulate FX um, Epic from F R O M for being picked up for renewal on season two. Congratulations from you guys are awesome. It's a supernatural drama series on Epic every Sunday, so check it out. Awesome. And we want to send a huge shout out to our friends over in Port Charles, um, a.k.a. General Hospital. 59 years. 59 years. April 1st started the 59th season. So, Woo-hoo! how amazing is that? Happy anniversary. <laughs> Happy anniversary is Happy right. Happy anniversary. So, okay. while we wait for the girls, let's jump right in it. And I think everybody who out there, you know, who listens to us faithfully knows that we have a beautiful relationship with the Bold and the Beautiful um, and they did not disappoint yet again with the current storyline. I have to ask, um, how do you guys feel? I Go ahead, David. Don't I'll let you answer first. They disappointed. I don't think saying, they Willie? disappointed us. Yeah. Oh, I was letting David answer first. Well, go ahead, Willie. What do you think? Um, I was not disappointed because um, I heard about some of the twists that would come up. And as we've been seeing it, there's still another one coming. But, oh, my God, I love all of it. And I know people aren't happy with what's going on with Taylor and Sheila, but I'm enjoying it because it's a little mix of this and that. And now they're bonded, and it's going to take it in a whole new direction. So I'm excited. Yeah, I like this I like the setup um, that they're giving us with Taylor and Sheila. You know, I mean, we haven't seen this Sheila in in eight to ten years. Um, You know, the the two stints in the, you know, in the previous years that she's been back, it's been rather lackluster. You know, we had those couple of of good moments. You know, I loved the Quinn, Katie, Sheila thing that went on, um, you, you know, but really, honestly, we have not seen this Sheila in a long, long time, and, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for even a bigger explosion, and I know it's coming, Willie. You know it's coming too. So yes, yeah. and I've given kudos to Bell for um, doing this. But um, I think, I, and I kind of pick up what he's doing. He's kind of changing the mixture around on the show because, as we all know. It's always been Sheila arguing and fighting with almost half the people in Los Angeles. But but now she's got a friend in Taylor for right now, and that's going to be fun because it changes the dynamic of their relationship. And that's what I like about it. I know a lot of fans don't like it, 
but I for one am enjoying the different changes in the mixture because it's showing that Bell's trying to shake things up. So I'll give him kudos for that. He he gets a thumbs up for me on this on this different uh, 180 degree yeah. turn. Yeah, and you know, and of course, at some point when when Steffi wakes up, there's you know there's going to be hell to pay. So you know, on all beats, this this is just uh, I'm 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 on the edge of my seat at the moment. I I bold you have recaptured my attention. You know, trifold. Everybody is speculating online that of course this is going to open up round 477th of you know Liam Hope and Steffi. I'm not entirely sure that that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, right. just the material. Like we both know there's, there's going to be another twist coming, so they can predict, or how do you say, they can assume all they want, but there's still one more. As far as I know, there's one more. There could be another one, but, uh, yeah, there's still another twist still still ahead. Here we are. Yep. Here we are. And also to answer your question, I was, I mean, as much as I love the storyline, I did already know what was going to happen with Finn's death, and I was, I, I was hoping they didn't go that route, but... When they did, I can also kind of see a little bit of perspective why they did it. But I love Finn. He's my favorite character. So I did yeah. cry when he died. That was really sad. I, w- I was shook yeah. up. I was shook up with it. And uh, I didn't expect this because, you know, he was really a decent guy. He was out of the mix. He wasn't going to be in that mix, you know, with the Steffi Steffi, Liam, and Hope thing. He was taking Jackie out of that mix and giving her her own life. So that shocked me when that shocked me. And he also and, had a know, great had to kill him all. He had a great repertoire. He had a great connection with Thomas. Thomas looked to him like a big brother. Yeah, What's about. I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna miss that. But also, you know, he. He very quietly held his own against all of them, you know, against Torsten and his rage. Yeah, you know, because Brooke is, uh... go ahead, Willie. Go ahead, go. Yeah, Los Angeles, they're, they're crazy characters, but you got to give Finn credit. He actually did hold his own against all the crazies. Yeah, he did. Um, I would not be surprised if we see him pop up somewhere else in daytime or, you know, as a series regular somewhere, you know, digital or nighttime. Um, you know, he he built a character that had lukewarm reception. You know, he built it into yeah. something that at the end, I, you know, as you said, as David said, we all had, you know, tears rolling down our face. So, yes, of course, we always pay homage to the writers and, and the producers that, yeah, yeah. that build these story arcs. But, you know, without the talent, you know, it, it, it falls flat. We, we've seen, you know, my biggest when – when we talk stories like this, I always go to the third Carly from General Hospital, Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer. I think she, she was a good actress. In a different role, she probably would have done great things. But, you know, coming in on a story like that, you have got to have power. You have got to be a power yeah. acting chops, um, you know. And unfortunately, Jennifer, Jennifer was thrown into a huge, huge story, you know, and just was not, was not able to, to handle it um, the way I think she would have if she had been, a diff, you know, a new character on canvas. Uh, but, but Tanner Finn, you know, he seamlessly, he built, that character and, and made us fall in love with him, fall in love with him and Steffi. Yep. And even, you know, even through the deceptions that he did, you know, with his father and, and then realizing Sheila and so on and so forth, it was done in a way that we, we, we were still rooting for him. We still, you know, we, he, he never lost uh, that shine for, for our viewers. Right. Yeah. And yeah. also, and what, what about you? When you mentioned oh, the hi, kid, I also liked the Claudia. That was a funny character when they had her on there. I liked Claudia. She was cool. <laughs> so, um, Candace, we were talking. We were talking about Bull, uh, Bull really pulling us all back in. Are, are you Are you on board with that too? Oh yeah. Is, hi, Candace. Okay. Hi. Okay, so here's where I stand at with this whole thing. We have to remember that this is a soap opera. 
everything's not going to be rainbows and lollipops. Some yeah, of our true. favorite couples don't survive. And some of our couples go through the ups and downs and in between. I think so popular. Bones are beautiful, I will say this. For a while, it has been... <laughs> Y'all know the word I'm looking for. It has been really interesting. This was complete shock 101. Because we all kind of felt something was going to happen to Steffi. We all felt something was going to happen because Sheila, like, Sheila is loose. She's a loose cannon. I didn't see the Finn part come in, though. That's what got I did, too. I'm like, okay, you know, Steffi was pushing and pushing. And it was even going to be brutal. I thought we were going to have a repeat of the, the, the fourth delivery room. I thought we were going to have yes. Brooke, Hope, Steffi. I thought something was about to happen. It was so, when I say this, I think everybody said that, it, that this was the darkest bowl has ever been. It really kind of has. And I know everybody brought up what's called his rape a few years ago um, in the alleyway and stuff, but it was so realistic because it just, it just hit all the right chords. It's like, okay, first you have, you know, Sheila and Steffi alone in the alleyway. Okay. We didn't right. see or think Sheila had a gun in her purse. That's what shocked me even more. I was like, this girl was loaded. She was loaded. This girl was meant to do something tonight. Then, you know, you had Finn on the way, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, he's going to get into a car accident. He's going to get into a car accident before he can get to Safi. My heart was racing. I kept looking at the time. I was like, oh, my gosh, like something's about to go down. Something's about to happen. I enjoyed every minute of it because I could not yep. tell what was happening. I felt like I was like, I was, I witnessed it like I was there. When Finn yeah, got shot, exactly. I was like, Greek tragedy. I was like, Sheila, there's no redemption for you, girl. None. I can see, I can see currently what I can see. I can see something. But in that moment, I was like, Oh my God! Yes. And the and the, the crazy part is, it felt like a movie, but it's daytime and it felt so real. No, like it you felt said, like I'm gonna tell you what I compared in. it to. I compared it to an episode of Law and Order and yes. All yeah. I, I compared it to prime time court shows, like drop, you know, like the cop shows and stuff. Because you didn't hear the whole, da 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 you didn't have the lighting, the bright lighting. And I'm just going to say something real quick because I need to address this. I, need to, I feel like I need to say this. I saw so many people and I heard so many people saying, oh, Finn fell in a pile of trash. Okay, if you're going to do the symbolic of it all, let me, let me break it down to you. When people get shot in real life, they're not in the Grand Hotel, like the Grand Phoenix. No. They're not um, on a boat. It's usually on the street, in a street. store, in a house, somewhere that's not fancy. So to me, considering where their location was, I had no problem with that. People took it as, well, boat treats sin like trash and sin like trash. Really? Y'all took that away? What y'all took away from it? Okay. No, no I, I, I disagree. I see it as gritty and dark, and that's like what you were thinking yep. just now. Kudos. And that's what the, the because I'm going to tell you what got me even, I'm going to tell you what even got me. Okay, the fact that Sheila had a silencer, that's what did it for me. I was like, I was like, when, when did we go to homicide life on the street? We went from bold to homicide life on the street, yeah. and I love it. Because the thing was with Steffi's blood and everything, because everybody was like, Sheila should be calling for help and everything. I said, think about it. Sheila's selfish right now. If she was to tip off the police, she would be more in trouble than, than anything. So, yeah, her shooting Steffi, I was like, oh, my God. I said, oh, my God, double, double homicide. They're going to report it. It's going to be a double homicide. Watch. 
But then when Sheila took the rings and made an attempted robbery, I was like, this girl is, I was like, this, 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 this is one of those movies for Lifetime. I was like, I said, okay, we're going there. I, <laughs> the hospital stuff, straight up ER. That was ER Chicago Hope. Yeah, well, not you know, there. after the, yeah. No, and after the after the shot, I was really waiting to hear dun dun, um, you know. But I knew, right? You know, Willie mentioned it before, and he beat me to the point. But the 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 arc that they're building between Sheila and Taylor, you had you you had to know, you had to know that something big was going to happen. I honestly, you know, like you, I was counting the minutes. I was I was waiting it down. I honestly thought. He was going to get there, open the car door, and hear the shot. That's what I thought. Um, and you know what? I was so, worried. I was worried because I when thought Finn got shot by one. accident by Sheila, I thought for sure she would lose it and just go after Steffi to shoot her. But what talked to me, and this is very impressive, she didn't just go after Steffi to shoot her. She went to Steffi and she told her to shut up, trying to call somebody, and that's how – that more impressed me because they didn't just go, oh, I'm going to kill you, um, Steffi. She had a reason to shoot her because she didn't want her to call anybody on that phone. So they twisted and but, changed it, which, which I saw was interesting. But I thought it was more interesting, like, okay, when Steffi said that, you know, cause after Finn got shot, right, you would think, considering what she wanted, was to be a mother to that to that man. If anybody... Who is a parent? Look, regardless of anything, you will call nine one one. But it's even more so if it's your son that's quote unquote laying and dying. You want to save your son. If all of this talk has been, I want to be a mother to him. I want to be in his life. His life is hanging in the balance. This is why I said Sheila was Sheila. Like for those who don't know, this is Sheila Carter, everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. Doesn't just when I was call. saying before you got on, yes. Yes, she is that person that, look, she don't care. Look, she kissed her own daughter in prison. She set up her mother. She almost, look, again. And let's not forget about her sugar, her baby. baby, sugar. Sugar, yeah. yeah. Sugar, sugar, baby. Mm-hmm. And Mike. Oh, my. Oh, my. But, but did I enjoy this story? There is one little flaw that I just didn't. And I caught it with a lot of other fans. It's they're putting too many other people in that hospital thing that we felt didn't need to be there. Like for example, Paris, why is she there? Like we don't need her there. She uh, she can do other things. We didn't need her there. Okay, so I'm going to address that because that's something yeah. else I saw. Everybody was like, "Well, where is this person? Is this person? Is this person?" Right. Some people have to understand that, like, today, like, yesterday and today, this was day two of she- of Steffi being in the hospital. This is in real time where it's been a week and a couple of days. In bold and beautiful time, it's only two days that has passed. The night before was when they all got shot and stuff like that. So, yes, the parents are going to be there. Yes, I want to know where Eric is because, if anything, Eric should be there. Now, Bill, that's what we asked. Bill? It's like why Eric, why is Paris right. there, well, see, but the not thing. Eric. Gonna, that's I'm what gonna, I thought. Gonna, gonna yeah, that. Bill, Bill, and Paris I, don't have any business really being there. Right, that's what we're saying. Well, it's or Zenday. What's going um, on there? I don't know. Maybe it's not Zenday. Zenday. You gotta remember Zenday. Zenday is Steffi's family. Cousin. It's her cousin. It's so yeah, family. And now right. that, that makes more sense. is a friend, like. I'm going to be honest, as soon as I get a phone call, like, okay, this actually is based on a true story, folks. I had a friend who was in the hospital, okay, and most of her friends was there. When I say there, like, we, everybody got the phone call around the same time, right? So everybody right. was like, we're on our way, we're on our way. Her parents didn't get there until, <clears throat> what was it, three hours three hours after the accident, and most, like I said, most of us was already there. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, Eric must be out of Eric. town. They're going to have to address Eric because if Eric is in Los Angeles, he should be there. 
unless they're going to play the beat where he was there, and then we will see John McCook later this, you know, even tomorrow or next week, and saying, yeah, oh, I came, so, and then I had to leave. So you think it's like a group, like a group text? Everybody found out that Steffi got shot. No, because here's the thing. Everybody found out at different times. you got to remember, Deacon was the right. first one to see them. So the cops, right. and by the way, I saw people saying this too, and I was like, clearly y'all have not lived this, y'all have not witnessed something like this, or y'all have not watched Law & Order. The cops do not recommend you calling the people and holding them up to your ear. They want to hear who you're talking to, so that's why they ask you to be uh-huh. on speakerphone. Which Deacon was. Uh-huh. Deacon was on speakerphone. He called, okay, yeah. of course, Bridge, who, you know, could have been, you know, with somebody else, but luckily he was with Taylor and Thomas. Then it would be, you know, when we saw the next the next scene was when Deacon came over to Hope and Liam, and that's when Deacon said, you guys don't know yet. Because... Right. Uh, nobody, you know. And then, of course, Bridget... Now, Bridget couldn't have formed... Hoping them, but she's a doctor. She's she's finding out herself that Steffi was the victim. So it trickles to what we see on screen and off screen. I think because some people are like, well, does Bill and Wyatt know? I'm pretty sure Liam probably told them. It's just we, the audience, didn't see it. And I think that's the problem. Right. That it's we, it's I feel like that like everybody wants to see all of this like play out in real time, and I totally understand that. But we also got to remember, yes, Gold is a 22-minute show. Right. Um, and also we have to kind of think, like, okay, clearly we're going to see these characters eventually while Stuffy's in the hospital. It may not be today. In other words, like I said, yesterday with Taylor and all that, that was day two of Stuffy in the hospital versus it's been a week and a couple of days for us. So, right. like, I always say wait to see. But, yeah, the Eric thing definitely needs to. The Paris thing, considering that she used to live with them and she had a thing for Finn, and she also is Steffi's friend. And she's been well, okay, that's what I'm saying. I needed that clarification. I'm like, why is yeah, wait a yeah, I don't recall her being, saying, um, I don't recall her being Steffi's friend, except for only being fantasizing about um, – in, so that's oh, yeah, because she so lived with them. Mm-hmm. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, they lived together, so yeah. Okay, okay, I get it now. That and makes, Zenday, that and makes the more Zenday sense than what we saw. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, I get that. So, is there anything else about Bold we need to discuss? Because I have a couple of questions about Young and Arrested as we move. Well, I, I want to I wanna ask Candace, Candace, I got a question for you and the rest of you. Um, was yesterday's the twist, you think? Mm-mm. No? And I know nothing. I know nothing. No, it's not. You don't think? But yeah. I'm ready, David. Yes. I do want to say yeah, yes. Yeah, get though. ready. Your jaws are going to drop and you I'm find ready. out what it is. Okay, I'm, so here's the yeah. thing, too. I thought that it was Because I need for everybody to remember this. Bold is still a day behind because there was a preemption. Right. So what we saw yesterday was supposed to be, wait a minute, let me get my my boundary straight. What's today? Thursday, Friday. That was supposed to be Tuesday. What we saw yesterday is supposed to be Tuesday. When I say bold is now cliffhanger every single day and must see, I will say yeah. this. I will say this. I've always said that when you kick Bold down, Bold picks, it's like the phoenix. It rises again. All I know, because I don't know much, all I know is you might want to keep a watch on certain things. See if you, I'm going to do like loving. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So from what I understand, they're a day behind. The, the, the real twist is going to be the follow not Monday coming up, the following Monday, unless they go back and edit because of the preemption. We're going to find something small out next week that leads into the twist, but the big twist should have happened next Friday, but because we're mm-hmm. a day behind, unless they go and edit, we'll get it the following Monday. That Monday. Anthony, 
Anthony, is that kicking off May Sweets early, or is that just part of their their current story? It's Bull part of the current Sweet. story. Try, but yeah, yeah. Bull, Bull doesn't Bull doesn't amp it up for sweeps. Um, sometimes they will hold like a big, you know, a big dramatization, you know, a storyline arc finishing right. Right. Um, into sweeps, but they don't build their storylines around sweeps. If they know that they're, oh, you know, they're ending a story or starting a new arc, they, you know, they'll try to work it into sweeps, but they don't write for the two sweeps periods. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I know a lot of other shows like Riverdale and all them, they've done other shows where they get ready to do their sweeps early, and I didn't know Bold and the Beautiful was fixing to go that route as well. No, you know, both CBS, both CBS shows have moved away from writing for sweeps, if you've noticed, even The Young and the Restless. After the Happy Hooker storyline, they really haven't written for, they haven't written for sweeps either. Hmm. Is Y&R behind as well, or is that just Bold and the Beautiful behind no, Y&R, I think, is behind, too. Yeah, they're behind, too. Yeah, yeah. Y&R is because behind, as well. Because if you look carefully, the storyline feels a little bit, like it's a little, just a little bit behind the other. So that's why I was curious. Oh, um, can we go into days now? Because Carolyn has been here and... Hey! Hey, Carolyn! Oh, sure. Hello! <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. All right, yeah, let's go to days. Let's go to days. I'm so excited. You are? Uh, Carolyn, yes, Will is I'm, excited. I'm so excited <laughs> because we finally got the reunion we've been waiting for for Y&R fans. Uh, Greg Rickhart and the actress that played Dana, De, 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 Dana, Dana from Dana. Young and the Restless. Dana. They're oh. now reunited on days as Leo and Gwen. Gwen. So, oh, my God. The fireworks yeah, have a are right there. I have a problem. With you that. have a problem with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do. Oh, let's hear it, Candace. I have I have such a problem with with young. I mean, with days right now, it's not even funny. I tried, you guys. I for those who about to say Candace always has an issue with Ron. Nope, it's not that. It's not that. I'm blaming everybody now. I'm going hard. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going hard. But I'm going to let the queen speak first. <laughs> Well, I wondered if anyone noticed with Leo and Gwen, and how do they know one another? I mean, Gwen came from nowhere. On it's it's weird. How do they know one another? Uh, okay. They were on the story same arc, circuit. Yeah, their story arc just started because if you catch on quick, they're they're building up to their back history and what's okay. leading up to the wedding. No, no, I understand that, but I still don't know where they knew one another in the past. When they were scheming oh, back yeah. in the day. We... What happened, Kevin? When they were scheming back in the day, I bet you. Yeah. They oh, were yeah, right. That's crime. what I'm saying. Yeah, no, they so haven't Candace, we, uh, that yet, Carolyn, right? we don't know yet. Oh, yeah, okay, but yeah. That's what I, mean, I thought, gonna yeah. I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to be surprised if they say that because <laughs> it's safe. It's safe. <laughs> It's days. Candace, <laughs> Candace, do you think that's a cop out, or do you think they should have more behind their backstory? You know, it's so cute when you have reunions from other shows on days. It is such a cute little thing to not to acknowledge <laughs> the fandom because of all people, Gwen and Leo know each other. You know what? Shout out to Young and the Rock for putting them together first. Always glad to see Greg Rickard and Emily O'Brien working and singing together. But this ain't flying with me. Uh uh-uh. uh, we're we're doing too much here. We're, we're doing too much. But if you if you use this for when one of them rolls out, I won't be mad at you. And I'm not talking about Leo. Well, you know what I'm loving the fact, and, and this is just a cute moment for me. Um, and it's not a spoiler because it's right there. You people can watch on the show. But um, that little moment where Gwen is convincing Xander, and Leo's convincing Craig about the double wedding. And they're teasing that, oh, and I got my friend Maddie, and he's he's going to cover our wedding. Oh, Gwen, you're going to dig yourself deeper. Who's Maddie? Is that his nickname or what? That's not. Yeah, where, where, I know it's no, Leo. No, that's actually, that's Maddie. Maddie. His, Leo. That's actually so where's Maddie coming from? That's, I think that's his, if I remember correctly, when Angelica came to town and when they thought John was his biological father, Matthew is his, name, is his biological name. 
Yes. Matt Cooper, right? Yes. Yep, that's his birth name. <laughs> I've got okay, a question so, for all of you, um, if Casey might know. Is there any truth to the drag queen that was on, um, what was it? Salem? You know what, Salem? The Salem Joy High story? Yeah, Jackie. Is there any truth to the drag queen popping up on days? Because I'm wondering if maybe she's connected to Leo's uh, thievery. Oh. Well, oh, no. well Jackie... Well, if they, cause Jackie and you know Leo was cool and tight. Like you know, well, it was an interesting relationship. If they have Jackie come on, I need Lisa running to come pop up because that scene was still the best. Mm-hmm. That was- Candace, do you think that's where they're going with that? Do you think? Do you think that that's what's going to happen? Because when um, Eric mentioned that. He was listening to something that Leo was talking to about some woman, that, and and I think it's Sunny that picked up on the name. I think it's connecting back to the the uh, Salem special they had on Peacock, right? Yeah, it's all coming together. Yeah. It was all in the drag show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At this point, they were on the same page. Yeah, that's what got me more excited too. I'm really excited about it because I love that Salem special, and if they're going to connect it to our days. Oh my God, that's gonna like really push. The, Here, here's the, the problem. Here's the problem. Uh, I'll just say it. Beyond Salem fans, by the way, still haven't heard about season two. Anybody heard of season two yet? Hashtag season two. Nope. Beyond Salem. Well, no update. No update yet. <sighs> anyway, I was just doing my sh- my shameless plug for season two of Beyond Salem. Thank you. Here's the thing. Dave's fans are so different from Beyond Salem fans because it was something different. It was something fresh. It was something, you know. I don't think they're going to tie all of this in because hmm. if they do have it that Jackie and Leo are working together, it hurts one person and one person only, and you kind of made a sacrifice for that that character, and that's Craig. Yep. And right now, Days of Our Lives fans are not that over the moon about what's going on with that storyline. No. Um, it's I. Yeah, that's. If you're gonna say that Leo I, is really, if Leo is is trying to get Craig's money and play Craig like a fiddle, I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to go there because. I just we we've gone too far in it, but I think we kind of know something ain't something's not adding up with that. No, I was hoping so, he'd be sincere, but I don't think it's going to go that way. And see, I love the well, character I, of Leo. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to make a sacrifice with this. You're going to make Leo, I mean, yeah, even though Leo did stuff to Sonny, I mean, the sexual harassment and stuff like that, but he's that messy character that you kind of, you kind of, kind of like in a way. <laughs> but if they do, yeah, if they do what I'm thinking, and I think many people are thinking this too, yeah. So I'm going to jump in on that, too, because I I have a lot of feelings about this. And, you know, just in case I need to remind new listeners who who may not know, I am LGBTQ. Um, No, stop playing. Really? Stop (laughs) it. Yeah, girl, really? Oh, my God. You broke me some news. Oh, my gosh. Yay. Sex LGBTQ Radio representing LGBTQ. So, you know, having said that, though, um, you know, I grew up with Craig and Nancy. I grew yes. up with that storyline, you yes. know, and, and there have been a few. Young and the Restless did it with Tracy. Um, well, yes. I, not the best, but well, you know, One Life to Live did it with Marcy and um, Al, you know, mm-hmm. and then there was Craig and Nancy. Yeah, there have been a couple of others, but none of them were as impact. These were the three that were impactful where a gorgeous guy and a, and a beautiful but vague woman, you know, found love. Found, you know, of course, 
in the Tracy, we all know what happened on The Young and the Restless with Tracy. You know, Al and Marcy, you know, they made it, and then, of course, you know, stuff happened, and Al was no longer, and then they, you know, kind of reprised it again with the second character. What was the second character's name? Well, um... When Al came back as somebody, what was the second character? I cannot remember. Oh, uh, Michael. 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 Michael, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but Craig and Nancy, it, it, it lasted. It, it, it they were high school sweethearts. You, you know, it just so to rewrite history like this. I, I loved it that it was Leo. I did. I'm gonna say that. But if they're not using it as the Leo redemption storyline, then I, I'm kind of with the rest of the Days fans. Why did you? Why did you have to? You know, there are other characters you could have done this with. There are other, there are other ways to I tell like, this story. I don't like the way they're making Craig so sinister. I mean, he's, he, you know, he, he's got that real nasty side, and then he's, like, he just has no clue, supposedly. That's how I remember him, Carolyn. I really? thought he no, was. That's yeah. how he was. Nothing on Craig, I, I don't but like I the half-life like side that. of him. Hasn't he always been wicked? Yeah. Yes, he's he always had a witness. He's been shifty. That part, that part I get. But, you know, we got to remember, he came in with Carly in that whole scene back in the day. So, you mm-hmm. know, he's always had the wicked streak. What I don't like is the hapless, like, you know, the dumb, like, I don't see what's going on. Craig, Craig's not, yeah, Craig yeah. was never stupid. The hapless yeah. part of it is what bothers me. Yeah. Oh, I get yeah. you. Yeah. I get you. And fans were upset that he's over there inviting his, what is he now? Uh, ex-wife, I guess, Nancy, he has the nerve to ask to invite her to his wedding to Leo. Let fans are all upset you. about that. <laughs> Let me tell you all something. Yesterday, I almost threw something at my TV. <laughs> because <laughs> of that and because of Gwen. Frank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I heard it Why? too, Candace. Why? 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 Candace, we all heard it. We all heard it. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Because now, see, I got to take my earrings off because this is about to be a fight. Come on, girl. girl. You're going to go over to Abby's house. Go go over to Abby's house and say, I was born here because Daddy would think this is a good way for us to bond, but I was thinking if maybe you could stand up for me at the wedding. Okay, soon as she said that, soon as she said that to that to that degree of acting, Abby to be her maid of honor, I was like this. Okay, the role of Abby's author is now being played by Candace Matt. No, bye. <laughs> that would that would have been it. No, bye. God bless. Shut the door. To me, you um, see. Okay, I need for I need for the writers. And you notice I said the writers and not the writer, but right. the writers. Yeah. By the way, you're blaming everybody. Again, to, <laughs> again congratulations <laughs> on the WGA awards, you guys. But I'm going to have to do this to you. Gwen is the character that has expired past the expired date. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. And to me, you are <laughs> trying too much, too much to make. Trying to because look, I think it was a year ago to the to the date. I said that watch they're going to try to make Gwen a sympathetic character. Well, Lord and behold, yeah. they tried that when that was revealed that um, Laura kept a secret about Jack and Gwen. Okay, now we're supposed to feel bad because Gwen has been lied to. Jack didn't know that was her daughter. Boo hoo, kid, kid. I said nothing. Okay, the next thing you were going to do is you were going to pair her up with somebody and try to force this relationship down my throat. Well, guess what? You did. Sandra and Gwen, I love Paul Fafner and I love Emily O'Brien. It's nothing against them. It's just I don't like this, these two characters. They were forced, forced together. Okay. Right. Then you have you to wanna... have her try to make amends with her sister, right? It's that Hallmark movie everybody loves so much, Christmas Christmas time in the Horton Square. That's that should be. You know what? Ooh, that's a good idea, Peacock. Peacock. Write that down. Um, <laughs> they're trying too hard with her. 
And now you got Leo. Of all the people in the world, in the country, you have her so, with him. So, Candace, are you kind of, got me curious here, are you kind of hinting that they're kind of doing a little way too much with Leo and and um They're doing Gwen? way too much with Gwen. Because I'm picking up on that. Picking up oh, They're doing Gwen. too much with Gwen, and I swear up and down, if what I heard was it's going to happen this year, I mm-hmm. went, look, Dave, she's not a heroine. She is nope. not a heroine. By far, no. When is a messy <laughs> character that had a purpose? See, Dave, I think you took a, a page out of the, the General Hospital book. When a character yeah. is only supposed to be there for a certain story arc or introduction and you give them a certain amount and then you close chapter, move on, you're good with rotating in and out. Gwen could have been that character that you would bring back a couple of months later, take out, uh-huh. bring back a year later. Why? Why are we doing too much? Now you're trying to have her and get her and Abby being sisters. They're brand new stuff. Okay, we don't have the rights to the Hope and Safe soundtrack, but you're doing too much. And don't get me started about the Sarah stuff that she's involved in. No. Here's the deal. Honest. I don't yeah. pay attention. Wait, hold on, Willie. Story. It's my turn. <laughs> it's my turn, real quick, I Willie. Because I, I gotta okay, say so this. You know, Ron, you left, you know, you left General Hospital under whatever terms happened there, blah, 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 blah. But honestly, you, are ter- you want Gwen to be Nell. You are trying to write Gwen as the next Nell. And, uh-uh. you know. I can't even give her that. I can't even give her that. I can't even get that. Wait a minute. Let me, let, let, let me finish my okay. thought process because when General Hospital realized there was no way to make her sympathetic, then they went full out. We're going to make her the maniac that, you, you, you know, that we've been waiting for, the maniac that was missing off of, can, off of the canvas for a while. But they tried everything they could to make her sympathetic for that, like, eight-month period of time. They, they did, and they, it was not working. And that's what's happening here at Gaze. Gaze, you got Emily. She's good. Let her go full-on ballistic, psychotic. And let this be the end of this storyline because there's nowhere to go with her. If yeah. the viewers are not going to accept her and Abby finding a sister relationship, it's not going to happen. The viewers are not going to are, are not going to be okay with that. So let her let everything the schemes that she's trying to do fall apart. But I see the writing on the wall because you know what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you this, and and we have we have done this before on this show. They're mm-hmm. going to make Craig go ballistic, and Craig is going to stalk or do something to Gwen, and Gwen's redemption is going to come at the expense of Craig. Mm. Tell me I you guys don't want even better. I give you one even better. Mm. I give you one even better. <laughs> Ready, Anthony? Okay, listen, mm-hmm. listen up, folks. Here we go. Gwen ain't going to die. Gwen nope. ain't going to jail. Here's what Gwen is going to do. Gwen is going to escape town. Because once all this stuff is revealed about the Sarah stuff, and you notice I'm not going to bring up the Laura Horton thing, because Dave, I've given up. I really gave up on this. All right. Whatever. You can't have but, everything we want, I guess. You know, we know she killed um, her, but go on. Well, no, because here's the thing. Because uh, last night. It turned it from a, what was supposed to have been a 15-minute conversation to a two-hour conversation. I kid you not about that whole storyline. I don't – no, I, I let it go. I have let peace in, and I let it go. Just like I let <laughs> about who set up Sierra on her wedding day. I let it go. I'm free now. <laughs> Ka-ka. Ka-ka. I love it, Candace. Away from my soul. Peace, but, peace, but, peace, free. But Gwen – but with Gwen, because once the Sarah stuff comes out, obviously there's two ways that she can roll out. Leo helps her escape town. Or, mm-hmm. everybody, let's say the, ma- the magic word, she has a mask. Oh, Lord. Oh. She out of town. Oh, it's no. It's coming in the days of our lives. So Honey, who's it going to be? It, it, Anthony or me? If they, who's going to get it if right? If they pull out another mask. I'm done. My divorce papers yeah, will be finalized, stamped. If they pull out another mask, I'm done. 
I'm done. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing I just wanted to bring up to y'all's attention because it's going to feel like deja vu bringing this up. Why oh, is wait, it? Wait a minute. Let me, let me say escape. something real quick. Well, or Jake is going to yeah. help her escape, even though Jake and her are going to be together. Okay. <laughs> now let's 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 shift let's shift topics for a second because I cannot believe we're here again. I cannot believe we're here again. Days of our lives. You 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 took the devil. You brought the devil back. You started out fierce and on fire. Now you are down to the point where it's pathetic. We are <laughs> over the devil. We are over it. The only thing I think that oh would make this interesting is if Eric gets possessed. Oh, oh okay. devil jump. Thank you. Thank I, if you. the devil jumps up into take Eric, Ali as the devil seriously. I can't well, take Ali as the devil seriously at all. At, at all. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it is about that situation because it was it was fascinating with um oh what's his name the younger one Johnny Johnny Johnny, Johnny. Johnny as the devil was Johnny. fun and exciting and it was interesting but you put Allie into it and to me I'm sorry but it's like those cakes that she has at her bakery it fell flat. <laughs> Mm. I, I, I'm, yeah, well, you know, towards the end well, of Johnny as the dumb, you know, or no, it's not the end because we never know it's the end. But you know, before mm-hmm. before this last twist of it all, I was still with it. I was like, okay, okay, especially that this all started with Ben and Sierra's baby. So I was yeah. like, okay, let, I'm giving it a chance. I'm giving it a chance. Now, you know, who's next? Who's who, who, who's the next devil? I well, think Ellie's the last one. Oh my God! No, I, I don't know. I think I we don't talked think about so. this, right? This, this devil storyline okay. is that supposed to wrap up to summer now or fall. It's supposed. To, uh, <laughs> apparently, Ron said that Allie Been. was going to be the last one, but I don't believe. Yeah, Ron that said it on one. Twitter. I don't believe. I'm sorry, but I don't believe. I don't believe that, that, that is far. Know, I, I believe. A lot I don't of believe that as far as I could throw Roseanne Barr when she first started her show when she was a big woman. <laughs> you know I can see where this is going, and I'm not going to like it. I can see where finally it's going to lead up to where another person that does that get possessed besides Eric is probably going to be Ben, so that she can okay. get so the devil can actually get that baby. <sighs> oh, oh well. Oh, oh and don't, don't ever change. Dan's supposed to be pregnant. Oh. Dan's supposed to be pregnant. So figure that one out. Okay. So <laughs> raise your hand if you're devil on. fatigued. <laughs> oh, I'm done. Well, I can't see yeah. I am. As soon as, I'm not going to lie. As soon as I yeah. saw that Allie was the devil, I stopped. Okay. I, lo- I, loved oh. it. No, I loved it the other day when Tony came in and he was on Andre. I mean, I find it all very campy. I find it very campy. I find it, it, it gets to a point, and I think that's the, that's the thing. For some of us who, who remember day one of the OJ, right, it mm-hmm. wasn't as campy Pretty as much. it is now. This is yes. the problem. No. You take a storyline that was so popular, and you know people are going to complain about it, but that means that you're doing your job. You're doing your yeah. job as a writer you're or a writer the feedback. that you're that you're yeah. giving that you're getting a lot of feedback from your fans, right? And you know, it was fun when you had Marlena. It, I mean, okay, let me just break it up. The surprise was Doug. Doug, all people being Doug, possessed yes. by the devil. That is how that you was do the it. Best ever. That was like yes. the shock. The whole beginning of when this was Marlena wonderful. Yes. When Marlena got possessed, it was like, welcome home, welcome back, Dave Carlisle. Yes. Welcome back with open arms. You targeted the young, isolated couple. And yes, I did say isolated because sadly, that's what they are. Sin fans, don't come at me because you know it's true. Okay, we ain't going to lie anymore. But the problem is, is that, okay, you had Johnny. Great twist. You had the grandchild of not only Marlena, but of the OG devil, Stefano DeMera, working with yep. something. Here's where it fell flat at. You had this devil a little bit too powerful to the point where the devil was in every storyline. To the point where everybody will say, "Well, the devil made me do it." Okay, that's legit. <laughs> because I'm not just to saying, mention the devil had, was just pointing his finger at random, and people were popping back up from the dead too. 
That's when it. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> part of when it started to go off the rails. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I, I didn't mind seeing Vincent agreement. back. I didn't mind seeing, but you know, that's when it really started to camp. Yeah, I would say I, 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 mm-hmm. with Johnny when Johnny when the whole he, okay, I get that the devil is supposed this this is the umbrella storyline that's supposed to cause ravage in, in Salem. But they did, to me, lose focus of the OG situation. They wanted to create new life of a mixture of good and evil, and that was Sierra and Ben. Here's the thing. Okay, you had Johnny, you know, that was great, up until the whole Chanel part. I'm about to get to it, but you had Johnny inserted into the EJ stuff, which was fine at first. But then the Gabby and Jake stuff. I ain't going to lie, though. Thanks to the devil, Gabby and Jake became a little bit interrupted. For a split second. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. second. Yeah. For a split, split second, lying. yeah. For it's a split then, second. You had, then you had the problem of, okay, now it's an alley. Here's where Candace would have been. If Candace was the writer of Days of Our Lives, and tell me if you guys agree or not. Okay, that devil wanted that baby. Okay. Marlena is close to Ben. Okay, Marlena is not possessed anymore. Who could be the next person to get close to that baby? Clyde. John. Uh, Bingo. 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 You just said it, Clyde. Yeah. Think Clyde. About it. Clyde yeah. is now living with them. Yeah. Nobody was <laughs> think about this, you guys. Okay, it's a Friday afternoon. You're watching Days of Our Lives on NBC, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have Ben and Sierra you know, talking and stuff like that, and they make the decision that Clyde would stay with them. Oh, that's great. You have that scene when Clyde was making Sierra a sandwich, and they're, like, kind of talking and stuff, and Sierra's still like, I still yep. don't trust and you. And flashing the eyes. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. So then, you know, Ben and Sierra, they leave and everything, and um, I don't know, the cross or something happens, right? And Ben says, like, Dad, can you pick it up or something like that? I don't know to that extent. Then we see yeah. Clyde look at the cross and like, you know what, I don't want to be a petty bitch today or something like that. <laughs> he turns around and we see his eyes are glowing red. Ladies and gentlemen, yep. yep. that is how you're supposed yep. to have played it. You could have did, like, I understand that you were trying to, like, okay, everybody in Marlena's family, because it does seem like the devil is coming after Marlena again if you're going to go through with the family. Yes, it could end with Eric because that's good versus evil. He's a priest, apparently. But to me, Clyde would have been the first one. Nobody would have suspected Clyde because think about it. Like, the fact that Sierra is, like, kind of the same way she is with Marlena, it's, like, kind of like, well, you know what, I don't trust her. But Ben is, like, well, people can change. People can do this, and he can help out with the baby mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Don't get me started, Dave, on how you're shading hope, by the way. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> I'm just going to say you're wrong. I understand you can't get the actress, but really, you can't mention the character's name. Okay. But it's like, that would have been like, because Clyde is in the house. He's in the house. He's watching. Yeah, he's today. in the house. Like, and yes. By the way, and you know what? Really they bad. could even make it that Eric figures it out and goes to confront Clyde and the devil jumps. Mm-hmm. And the devil jumps. And then the end of the storyline is the good... You, he's the priest. He's Malena's son. He's the priest. It is the ultimate end to that storyline. The, there is no need the baby to put it, And you can't find the baby. Exactly. You can't find the there baby. was no need to put Allie into it. If anything, you know, the devil should have been biding its time in Johnny until it had the moment to jump. I agree. It should have went into Clyde. should have went into Clyde 100%. And the ending of the storyline, yeah. I'm hoping no matter how you play it out, I'm hoping that the ending of this storyline involves Eric. So I just want somebody to go crazy. I'm not surprised if the next person that gets possessed is Chad. <laughs> you know what I would love, it, to be honest? Here's yeah. the twist. What if the devil jumps to Sierra or Ben? No, more than Sierra. <laughs> What Wait. if the devil jumps to Sierra right if she goes into labor? Oh, Lord. <laughs> because oh, think God. about it. Somebody's going to have to descend in madness. 
if we're going to go there, let's go there. Because, okay, for some people, some people believe the baby shouldn't be existing because it was the devil's prophecy to, to, create, to, create, to create the baby. That was the devil. Okay. So there's so many ways they can go with this. Well, oh, you know what? The devil has Wait, the hold up, now. hold up, hold up. Leaving Eric out of it completely is the devil jumped into Sierra as she was giving birth, and they go through a whole, um, what do you call it, exorcism, but then that leaves the whole, is the baby. How are we going to know? The baby's the baby. We have no way to tell. And then you've got an umbrella storyline that could last a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But also remember this, too, that the devil also allows to have your mind erased of what they did. Right. Like the Susan. With the devil. Like Susan. Like Susan, or, yes. or they keep the memories in. What if, okay, based off of the promo that we saw, right, and I'm pretty sure y'all saw after the Olympics, you know, promo, we saw Allie yeah. and Sierra, right, and apparently Sierra yeah. is going to be given, but oh, my God, this is going to be good. What if, okay, at that time, all right, Allie, like, Al Devil goes into Sierra and makes their sea devil work with me. And mm. Somehow, some way, warped her mind to think that she delivered a stillborn or had a miscarriage. I know it's dark, Dave. I know, but guess what? It's dark. This is, this is how the devil plays. That was, and everybody keeps saying that she, or, like, I'm just saying somebody going mad. Like, can you imagine Sierra going crazy? Yeah. Because yep. she believes that her baby, she she knows that she had it or something. But she goes crazy, like she goes to madness. You he oh he God. clouds her mind so that she thinks ninety five percent of the time that she gave birth to a stillborn baby. But then she keeps hearing the baby crying. She keeps mm-hmm. thinking, yes, oh my mm-hmm. God, and it's madness. Yes, that's great. Too. I like to I like to thank the Academy of the Daytime Emmy <laughs> for best writer. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that idea. It's kind of like and the way Ryan argued it. It's like Ryan I swear argued. up and down. Ron, Jamie, Richard, David, Carol, all you guys over there, Cheryl, if y'all heard this and y'all do it, just to let you know, I take them out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and honey, for no me, checking. because I'm, 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 you know, I'm lowly editor breakdown or dialogue breakdown or whatever. I just want a one day walk on roll, but a good one. <laughs> you know, they call it an, they call it, they call it an under five. Well, I want my five to be memorable. <laughs> I have, I have to have my. Got, they have to call my agent. I'm kind of busy, so they have to call my agent. Before you go over to the other soaps, I just want to drop off some quick teasers. First of all, get ready because the wedding is going to be major. And also, when Sammy returns, she's going to have a new love interest, and it won't be EJ and it won't be Lucas. So get ready for that. It's going to be exciting. It should be Brandon, but that's just me. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> hey Candace, what happened to Brandon? Could they return him? Could it? Could they like recast to bring Brandon back as a different actor? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying, okay. what happened to the character? Did he just skip town? Uh, yeah, he just rolled out. Okay. I mean, we all, we we can all. I, I think we can all see the writing on the wall. It's gonna be Rafe again. Oh Jesus. Uh, you think? It, it, yeah, look at the way the storylines are going. It's going to be Rafe again. Because cause he's with Nicole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because Eric's back? It, because Eric's back, oh, yeah, cause... it, it, it's going to set up that Kaja angle, and then it also, you know, they're never going to give up on EJ and Sammy. So it, 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 it will tie a lot of storylines together. <laughs> like, you know, I'll... I'll eat crow if I'm wrong, but I, I can, you know, looking at the way the storylines are going, it's going to be right. It's going to be right. And Eric, no, I hope well, you guys don't mind. Erica Priest or Eric's See, Eric's, Eric's a priest, still gonna but be I a think priest. I know the writing is definitely on the wall for where Eric is going to be heading to. Lord. 
Probably Nicole. What ha- what ha- anybody know what happened to Eli? Wait, he, wait, he he got yeah, he's still in a coma. coma. Yeah. Is he off the show? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, okay, so here's the thing. Eli's so in a coma. Around this time. Him on, uh, you can watch him on All yeah. American on um. Yeah, CW. around this time is when he was filming All Americans, which is currently wrapping up this, this, this current season. Uh, okay. So while okay. he was filming, that's what they did. They put him in a coma. But I'm glad you brought that story up. Okay. Shouldn't that be one of the big stories being told on, on Days of Our Lives right now? Mm-hmm. Even if you don't have Lamone. By the way, happy belated birthday, Lamone. Um, you still could be playing this whole Paulina and stuff. I've now said, I know Young and the Rock was fans used to always joke about Winter Wednesdays. Y'all remember that, right? Winter Wednesdays. Because yeah. every mm-hmm. Wednesday we'll see the Winter Wednesdays. So now I have Price Price Town Tuesday, Thursday, Friday of every other week. Um, Tuesday we saw Paulina and them. Right. Sadly, we did not see them today. Yeah. There may be hope tomorrow, though. If there not, is, we'll they, see them they tomorrow. Are on tomorrow. No, they're, they're on, on tomorrow. There you go. Oh, they are. Yeah. See, look at that. Price Town other other day. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I do. I do have a surprise for y'all. Um, if you check out, if you like horror movies and you love Billy Flynn, check him out on a horror movie. It's called Escape Room. It's on Tubi and it's free. And be sure to listen. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's really good. I came across it by accident, and me and my daughter. That, that, I, I'm glad it. that it's okay, but you didn't it answer the question. Is good. Is is he shirtless? He's not going to uh, All right. Candace, I'm not going to tell you. He's going to watch it. Good. He deserves an Oscar for it. He deserves that. Okay, so that means he, he was sure. Let's thank you. All right, folks. Let's jump over to Port Charles and General Hospital. Lord Jesus. Okay. I got a lot to say. I, I'm going to say yes. this first. I say got it in Italian. The show is on. <laughs> I do think I do think the show is on fire. I I think it is. that they are very creative in in the way they're telling the stories right now. I think they're on fire, but I have a couple of problems alongside you know, all of my kudos. I um I felt that the way that they ended, and we, we went over this the last time, but I think it needs it needs bearing and repeating because they're setting up the next fall. I think that the way that they ended Peter gave uh, or le- was the lack of the payoff that we all needed for investing, you know, three and a half years of our lives into that story. Mm-hmm. I think the payoff was horrific. Absolutely horrific. The saving grace for it, though, is that it set Felicia up for what's happening now. So I'll give that. The saving grace on all that was that it brought Felicia back into the, back into the fold. But I'm um, I'm horrific on how that actually played out. We deserved the who killed Peter. We really did. Oh yeah, uh, you wanted you wanted a who done it too. I I wanted a who done it. All right. I don't know why they bothered to take us down to, I don't know, what was it, Martinique, St. Paul, St. Pete. I don't know where they took us, but that that whole stupid island storyline, why bother? Why bother? Um, <laughs> now, oh, Harmony Polynesia? and Neil Point. Harmony and Neil Point, too. Lord, have mercy. We all knew two years ago that Willow was Nina's daughter. Y'all played with us. You threw us a curveball, blah, 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 blah. And now to correct the mistake that you did way back then, you're now bringing the storyline full circle. Okay. I'm good with that. This man is so desperate for money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He done never opened the file until a week ago. Please. He had that file sitting there. And knowing he was going back to Alexis, et cetera, et cetera, he never opened the file. Police. Police. I am. I, I, you have gold mine, General Hospital. You have gold mine with Ryan Chamberlain. Harmony's involved. 
Esme's involved, the Cassidines yeah. are involved, the Spencers are involved, the police department is involved, and you yeah. want to bring us back to Neil Byrne. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, the Obama storyline that could be happening with Ryan, that he could have found a way to get Spencer under his control. He could have used Harmony for this, this is another nurse. What was her name? The one whose head ended up in the apple bobbin? Nurse oh, Mary. That, um, what was her name? Um, nurse Mary Pat. Oh, this is yeah. this, this is another nurse. This is another nurse Mary Pat. They had gold in Nurse Mary Pat. Gold. And they wasted it. And they're doing it again. And I am angry. Another thing. What the hell is Valentine doing? Yeah, that Are was my question. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He has finally got his Anna, and now he's going to be working with his father. Are you kidding me? Having said that, or is he? I'm. What do you mean? Or is he working with his father? That's that's why I'm questioning it. Maybe he's trying to figure Victor out before Victor figures it out. Anthony, what's going on with this Valentine and um? Jennifer's situation, I get all confused on that. Okay, so Valentine has nothing to do with Jennifer. He popped up out of nowhere. He was supposedly recuperating from the injuries with Peter, this and that. Now, they had to write the character out because he was filming a Disney series. I get that. But how the heck did he go from recovering from the injuries to down on the tropical island meeting with Jennifer. The only way he could possibly <laughs> know. The love boat? Uh, yeah, exactly. The only way he could possibly know is if he's working with Victor. If he wasn't working with Victor, he would have brought the information to Anna immediately. It doesn't make any sense. I am, I, I, I'm baffled. They better have a real good explanation coming up on this one. Um, I honestly, for the first time with- ever felt... Go ahead. What's going on with Anna and Felicia doing Charlie's Angels? What, who are they following the case on? Because I get confused on that, too. I, I, I'm not sure what you're asking. Like, what is the Anna and Felicia, point, uh, they went undercover at that Polynesia Island? Yeah. Do you know what they're pursuing? That, that is for bidding on the diamond. Yeah, that's um, that. Anna cannot go because she's more recognizable. So Felicia is going to that auction, supposedly. Okay, that's And I sense. guess, yeah. Well, that's so, all wrapped up now. I that's guess. That's all wrapped up. There is no auction. They, what do you mean you don't know? Because they found the diamond in Jennifer. Yeah. They got the diamond. The only thing there is I no don't auction. know for sure. The only thing I don't know for sure is if Valentine put it there. Because I didn't, I couldn't, I think I stepped away for a while or something, but I didn't see anything after that. Do you think he put it in there when she was in the bathroom? He had to have. He had, I'm going to say this. I believe Jennifer. I believe, I believe that she was, she was blindsided. And she wouldn't have gone through the the whole setup of bidding on it. And who was she talking to on the phone? Which, if the rumors that I have seen, I, I, we know Anthony Geary is coming back. We know Jonathan Jackson is coming back for a brief period of time. So if the rumors out there is that Fluke happens to be married to or shacking up with Jennifer, and the way we get Luke back is because he's been with Jennifer this whole time, faked his death, and he's fluke. Uh-oh, General Hospital, we, we're we going to have to go back to marriage counseling again. Mm. But I'm going to give faith and say General Hospital is not is not going to go that direction. I'm going to – I'm just going to – I'm crossing myself as I say it. I have faith that the storyline is bigger and better than this. Not to mention but, we still have the – we still have the outstanding Holly, the outstanding Ethan. Right. So they – you know, this storyline better better answer some of those questions. I better answer My quick question for all of you is where do you think this is going between Esme and Nicholas? Do you think he's really going to succeed in trying to seduce them? 
this is where my Ita- our Italian comes in. <laughs> Nicholas A. Stupaga. And that's, Plain English. He a dummy. I yeah, that's something what else, I said. I forgot this is a family friend show. Ugh. I All think right. we're going to end up with I can't help wonder him. if they're doing this so that you can free Ava and maybe Ava gets with Victor. Uh, and what, okay. then Anna goes with Robert? No, I don't see it going in that direction, no. Um, and okay. and Ava, okay. Ava and Victor, uh, Ava and, wait, did you say Ava and Victor or Ava and Valentine? A- Ava no, and Victor. Ava and Victor. It looks like they're flirting. Oh, Lord, they're not related, right? They're 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 they're, they're like they're not related in any way, right? No, Ava and Victor, I, I, no. I, I, then they're not going there. They're not going to go there. No. What I think is, and, and I hate to say this, God, I hate to say this, God, I hate to say this. Frank, please tell me I'm wrong. Oh, Frank, you know my phone number. Please call me and tell me I'm wrong. I think we're going to have a Nell and Sonny part two. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I call yeah. that a mile away because a what? Okay. A what? A Nell and Sunny part two. Oh yeah, I heard Romy. Is anybody know about that? Is Nell really returning? No, it's not. It's not Nell. No, just think about. No, we're talking Nell about and Esme and Nicholas. And Nicholas. Oh so yeah. So Nell drugs Sunny and Nell walk in on them. No drug sunny, so Carly would walk in on them and think that was the last time they were about to get. Did they get the divorce? No, they didn't get the divorce. They just they were about to get the. No, wait, mm-hmm. they were about to get remarried and then they got post. Oh Lord, have mercy! Know. I don't yeah. even remember now. What I remember is remember that she either. set it up so that Carly would walk in on them and Bing Bang Boom. It, but they ever they never actually slept with each other, and I think that oh, they, I they're get setting it. up. Oh. A, yeah, this is yeah. cheating. Yeah. They can think it. I'm going to be honest. I actually say they're going to sleep together because guess who's going to get pregnant? Hey. Hey, baby. Hey. Hey. Or I think she's going, she's going, to, I think she's going to. I'm going to say that she's going to sleep with Nicholas, but she's also going to sleep with um, um, Spencer. Spencer. Yep. She's going to speak, sleep with Spencer, and we're not going to know for sure whether or not she slept with Nicholas. That's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. How we because you about yeah. Esme, you talk. Esme is hired to destroy the. Uh, okay, see, okay, General Hospital. Let's talk for a second. Esme is an interesting character. Not gonna lie, but you did something that mm, reminds us of Nell, Peter, Hayden, Jason. Okay, you connected her to a character that we love, and we love the Ryan Chamberlain. No one knows you can. Okay, we know that you enlisted her to help destroy Ava because if you go through all the stuff like the beginning, she burned Ava's car, but we thought it was fun. Right. Okay. Then you had her do her own thing against Trina, right? Okay. But you also have left a little window open, just a little bit, when you said her adoptive parents are dead. That means her biological parents are out there. Now, for all those who are saying it's Ryan, I want y'all to rewatch that scene when she said, Daddy. You like it when I call you Daddy? Because you Daddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All she had to do was lean over and shake her booty. That's, that would be it for me to see that scene played out. But, again, I don't there's think a lot of her. I don't think that's her dad. No, no I don't that's either. what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Everybody says that's Ryan's daughter. No, to me, it's a cult thing. For those who watch One Life, yeah, Family, yes, you're going to hear this a lot lately. I'm thinking of a Mitch Lawrence and Allison Perkins type of relationship yep. between those two. Yeah, and yeah, I get it. For those who didn't watch it, let me give you a, brief, a real brief history. Mitch Lawrence told told his followers to do what he said, abide by his rules, uh-huh. and there will become plenty of fortunes for you. Yes, Roscoe Bourne, I still remember that line. God bless you. Um, and his followers would do certain things. Allison Perkins had did stuff, stuff to Jessica, to Natalie, to, to, to Victoria, all for the for Mitch's bidding. So Ryan has his follower, which is Esme. She's a lost little girl. This is like a lifetime movie. She's a lost little girl 
who needed a dad in her life after her dad died. <laughs> her biological dad doesn't want anything to do with her. This is so sad. Actually, I'm kind of feeling sorry for Asmi when I'm saying it like this. Not really, but okay. So she wants to make her daddy proud. Her dad is lying. She also wants to make Spencer, but hey, Nicholas is kind of a, doof, a goofball with no brain cells. Mm-hmm. Hit, hit him up. The main thing is, is to try to get Ava hurt. Just mm-hmm. like Ryan was hurt by Ava, they want to hurt Ava. So it's sort of like, oh, it's a mess. If they do it right, I'm going to say this. If they do it right, and when I say do it right, General Hospital, go on YouTube, right? Take a look at the following triangle. Anthony knows where I'm going at with this because we get each other. We're like, we're, we're in sync. We're in sync. Once upon a time in General Hospital, there was this character named Catherine Bell. Right. Yep. She fancied Nicholas. Well, Nicholas fancies her. And then she Stephon fancied Stephon. Stephon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gave with a little bit of play with Luke, but yeah, go a ahead. A little bit, not a much, but a little bit. By the way, that part can be Cameron. Boom! Look at that. We just came up with a good story for you, GH. Don't let's see. You can make this. You can make this good. But I know what you're going to do. You're going to have her biological parents pop up, and we, the audience, are going to know who they are. I swear up and down for any that's if you do this before Elizabeth's parents come to town, we're gonna to have beef. Yeah, oh my god, yes, I was going to that next Oh no. But wait, I just got I just gotta throw something out here. Okay? I hate to say this, but I have a feeling this is exactly where it's gonna go. She's gonna get pregnant, something's gonna happen, there's gonna be all kinds of drama involved medical wise, and we gonna find out. Bing bang boom. Not only was Nell a twin, but so was Kiki, Lauren, Catherine, Jerome. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, no. And the reason that Esme hates Ava so much is because why did you keep one daughter and not the other? And here's the, here's the saving grace to this. We don't know Kiki's birth story. We know what they told us between, scenes, between her and Silas Clay. But we don't know the actual story. We don't know how Kiki was born. We don't know anything. In fact, they were flirting with way, way, way back when that Nell was, uh, um, excuse me, that um, Kiki was actually Nina's daughter and that Ava had never given birth at all. So yeah, I remember that. We don't that. know yes. the birth story. Yes, I always We don't that know the birth story. I, met, I thought Esme the first time I always picked up that Esme could be Ava's other daughter. That's what I'm thinking. That's so what I'm thinking. So we're not going to go the Felicia route. So that no, means I like they, if you they, look at it, that I, means Ava gets her daughter, which would be Esme, and Nina gets a daughter, which would be Willow, which personally <laughs> I liked it better when Sasha was Nina's fake daughter. I just I just can't handle her with Willow. Let's, let, let's put it this way. General Hospital... This is a history with General Hospital. Carly and Bobby, and I think that there were more before Carly and Bobby. I can't remember any specifically in the 80s. I can't. But Carly and Bobby, um, the other one, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord. Uh, Sam and Alexis. Sam and Alexis. And now Nina. You know, they love to set up the mother and daughter hating each other before we find out it's the mother-daughter. That they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, now I still like the idea of of Esme being of Esme being Ryan and Felicia's, and, and I say yes. this because yes. she could have gotten all, you know the bulk of Ryan's genes, and Felicia's other kids with Frisco, you know, got the good because they're both good. Right. So you know it could play out with Felicia, but I'm really liking the idea of. <clears throat> of them playing this with, with the whole Ava tinge. I could see both ways, and I could see them doing that if they did turn it to be like that with being Felicia's daughter. That would mean that Max could get another sister. Yes. Okay. 
Now let's jump to, to Elizabeth and that whole mess. Okay. <laughs> General Hospital, I'm going to say this right now. We have talked about the, the fact that we might need to go back to marriage counseling. I'm not ready to divorce you the way I'm close to being ready to divorce Dave. But I, I might have to go back to marriage counseling, and I'm going to say this. If you do not give us Elizabeth's parents in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have a real big problem. I'm going to have a real big problem. And if you make this that Elizabeth has DID and she's actually doing this to herself, and you don't bring her parents in here, I'm going to have a real big problem. And i got to say this, too. With rewriting history with General Hospital, I have overlooked a lot of things. But if there is some other deep, dark trauma hidden in Elizabeth's past, and we have not heard it all of these 25-plus years, I'm going to have a real big problem right. with that, too. Okay. I'm picking up that one, one Life to Live vibe of the DID as well with Elizabeth. Right. I think he's blacking out. I, I don't think she's blacking out. I don't think it's, D, I, I don't think it's DID. I think it's Hayden. Okay. I think it's Hayden. Okay. I, I got to jump in with this. Let me, again, take yeah. my earrings off, because I'm going to be that girl right now. Come on, girl. It's a shame that in the 25 years, there's been characters who've only been on for the show for six months, get a smile baby brother before Elizabeth's brother. Elizabeth Wait, was, Candace, back Candace, Candace, you're breaking up on us. Talk closer to your mic. Okay, can you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah now. Can you guys hear me now? Yes? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was saying that if you have characters like Curtis and all these characters that have been on for not even a year yet or or even a year or six months and has a mommy and a daddy before Elizabeth, I'm having an issue. It's now gone on too long. The fact that you hope we'll remember that in August, Rebecca Herb celebrates 25 years on the show. This character has gone through the highs and the lows, and you have not had her parents there for anything. You now all of a sudden have her parents reaching out to Terry and to Jake. Right. Interesting, but really, G.H., you should have had Jeff Weber when it was revealed that Hayden was her half-sister. Yeah. You should have had Jeff Weber when Stephen Lawrence went to jail. And for those who keep saying, oh, you guys want Jeff Weber because of Elizabeth, that's, that's part of it, yeah. But let me say this. Jeff Weber is a part of General Hospital's history. The rewrite has been Sarah and Elizabeth because they were a non-factor in Jeff Weber's life until... 97, 96 to 97. They need to stop trolling. And yes, GH writers, I'm saying it. You're trolling the audience because you know we've been asking for Jeff Weber for so long. So when we hear the name Jeff Weber mentioned, it's like, is it going to happen? Will it happen? I'm going to tell you this right now. Robert Newman's over younger than Russell. So sorry. But, you know, there's other great actors right. out there. <laughs> and Michael Park. Um, to play the role, you could have had James DePiver on there as Jeff Weber, but y'all chose to make him somebody else that knew what he about. Um, and this story on with Elizabeth, I don't know where they're going at with this. I really don't. I do hope it's DID. I do hope. But then again, I don't know. I don't know where they're I going. don't know either. I don't know they're played. You know, as much I, I, I don't know. I'm not ready for another part, DIG storyline. I, I gotta say that though, I actually is, hope that we find out that Jeff is not Elizabeth's father, and so they, that's why basically they sent her away. You know, and we're out of her life. And 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 in all of this, they really should tell us where the hell Sarah is. <laughs> did Sarah so ever meet Hayden? Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. No, they did. They they explained it. There was other last year and the year prior. Oh wait, yeah. Sarah is in Cal. Yeah, Sarah is in California because they had gotten off the phone with her, and Sarah apparently has a kid. 
and she's in and she's in California. She's a resident at the at the hospital. Hopefully, she's still in jail. Got to lock them. And when the whole hate and stuff came out. The last was her first and girl. Candace, you're all kinds of breaking Candace, up. Candace, you're going away again. Oh no. Okay. Wait, can you guys hear me now? There you go. Yes. Yeah. You're clear okay. now. The the last time we heard about Sarah, because Elizabeth had 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 um called her, and apparently Sarah's in California. She has a kid, and she's a resident at the local hospital. Stephen is still in jail, I believe. And yeah. And her parents left. Time when they said something about because when Hayden's paternity came out, I think Jeff and that was over in Europe. Yes, they had called. Somebody had didn't Elizabeth call Jeff saying you have another daughter? Yeah, because but, of the Hayden. Because of Hayden. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. And he didn't. He didn't pick up. He never answered. Her. Yes, I remember that. Mhm. Okay, so you think she has DID? Oh. I don't know. I want I don't, something I really don't know. that best fits Becky, but I don't know what that is. But the sad part about it, and I love Liz, it's just the fact that they're not giving us enough build-up to, to get into yeah, the story hard. of who's the stalker. Bingo. Because you got all those other stories. You're wrong. I love all the other stories kicking in. But they could focus a little more on Elizabeth's story if they're going to make it a DID story, then make it believable. Because we're going to hear, oh, she's DID, she's blacking out, doing this. A lot of towns aren't going to buy it. They're going to throw fit. Because here's the thing. She's been consistently here for 25 years. She had a rape. She had a child, she had a child under duress. She had a child that was dead and brought back. You know, if the trauma hadn't come out with all of these, that it's now coming out months after Franco died, it just doesn't. It doesn't ring. It doesn't ring. It doesn't, it doesn't play well. That's. You know, I like a good DID storyline. Always did, but this is not the one. This is not the one. And then with Jonathan Jackson returning as Lucky, I'm hoping and I pray that this Elizabeth crazy storyline wraps up before Lucky returns to General, um, to uh, Port Charles. I don't okay. because Jonathan it's, Jackson is yeah. only coming back for a limited time. So I don't want to destroy Liz and Finn just for a relationship that's going to happen for, you know, a couple of months or two weeks or whatever it be. And then he's got to go again. But I do want him to be there for her because, yeah, in all honesty, Lucky, Lucky, if we're gonna if we're gonna go there, Lucky was her saving grace, and that's oh. even though there was a lot, there was a lot, oh. but he was her saving grace. Oh, you know what that? Because I'm thinking that he's coming back for the Victor storyline. Obviously, you know, Luke is alive. You know, obviously, whether he's fluke or not, he better not be fluke. I, that's all I got to say. He better not be fluke. But um, Luke is alive somewhere. Um, and, and I was picturing Jonathan Jackson coming back through that storyline. And miraculously, you know what's going to happen. Lulu's also going to wake up. So mm. I think he's going to be around for all that. I absolutely want to see him reconnect with Elizabeth and, and work with her through all this, but I don't think he's coming back for her storyline. I think he's coming back for this other storyline. And in the process, General Hospital, even if Holly's not, you, you know, uh, what's her name in real life? Emma Sams. Even if Emma Sams is not doing well enough to, to come back, although I, I heard her on a different podcast recently saying she's doing well enough, she'd be open to, et cetera, et cetera. If that has changed, you better at least work in Ethan and Holly into the storyline because you, you left it out in the ether, and, and we, you know, we, need, we need closure with that too. Yes, with technology, they can do Zoom call or do something real creative. It's not hard. Well, you know, they can send them on, on, on a cute little, you know, on a cute little adventure and, and scoop okay. up Holly wherever they happen to be. Yeah. 
Who is that? Hold what? on. Okay. Oh, we have a caller. Candace. Yes. Candace, you want? Do you want to say something? Yes, I'm going to get ready to go because my aunt is going to take me out to celebrate because something happened to me last week. Um, I don't know, uh, some some kind of award. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, <laughs> but um, Girl, I just wanted to say. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank for those who well, don't know, I guess I. Yeah, congratulations, um, it was, Proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Forever Day yeah. cast won Best Ensemble at the Indie Series Awards last night. So my aunt decides that she wants to take me out, and I have no idea. She's going to probably take me to McDonald's. She's trying to tell me we're going somewhere fancy. We're going to McDonald's probably. Candace, are you but, um, I just, for another season? Uh, stay tuned. I always wanted to say that. Stay tuned. Stay tuned to your local CBS stations to find out. I don't know. Um <laughs> But stay tuned for all that kind of news. And also, um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for believing in us. And also, Young and the Rustless, because I, I, I'm pretty sure y'all going to go, y'all are doing good, yeah, but yeah. y'all know y'all still got to work on some kinks. Just saying. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Bye, so, I love you that. guys. All right. Bye, love you guys. Kenneth. See you oh. next time. Bye. I love you, honey. All right. Before Bye. we jump over to the Young and the Restless, um, Tabiana Ali, go, David. Yeah. I think she's doing trainer, great. I David? think she's doing great. Yep, I'm right here. Uh, Willie? Okay, is that the new trainer? Yeah. Yeah, the new trainer. Oh, I adore her. Hold on, guys. Trina. Yeah, I love her. You guys love talk. You I think we got a caller on the other line. Okay, cool. I, I'm loving her, me... and I'm loving that little that little flare of chemistry that we saw with Rory, the new cop. Um, yeah, wasn't that gonna... cute? He got her. He got her a soda. Yes, I, I love that cute little spark right there. And and you know, this is General Hospital. He, he, you know, he's going to be the one that finds some evidence or something. All right. Anthony, um, you know so what we I might see. I could see them doing a triangle with Rory, Tina, and Spencer. It's going to be fun. You know, I'd be very interested to see if Cam and Josh can jo- Cam and Josh continue to have differences, and somehow hey Rory guys. pops up into. Yes, let's go. Bring it on. Yes. Okay, yes please, I want Nathan. Cameron away from Jocelyn and with Edmund. We got Nathan on the line. Hey, you know, hello. Hello. Hey, hello. How's it going? Hey. Hey, hey, guys! How are you guys doing today? We're doing We're good. Doing We're good, doing good. What are you, what are you calling in to shout out about? <sighs> yes, I wanted to. Um, this is about General Hospital, and I wanted to talk to you guys. And it, this is kind of like a question and a comment, but for me, what do you guys think about uh, Roger Howarth as Austin so far? Uh, because for me, I think it's time that. Uh, Roger Howard goes somewhere else and leaves General Hospital in the dust because he is not getting, to me, the storytelling that he should be getting right now. I feel that him and Maxie as a couple are very, very awkward together. I don't see any chemistry between them. And I also think that at some point in General Hospital, or shall I say the um, executive producer of that show, is going to have to let let him go. And same goes for Michael Easton because both of them, as their characters, are just not at this point. It's just not working out for me anymore, and they really deserve better. All right, I'm going to shout out. I shout out on that first. Um, I don't really feel a lot of chemistry between Austin and Maxie, but I like the quirkiness. It almost reminds me a little bit of Maxie and Spinelli. I like the quirkiness of it. What I'm really going to like, if they decide to go in this direction, I like the chemistry between Roger Howarth and Britt, um, Kelly Tybalt, people. So if they decide to do a triangle in that direction, I'm really going to like it. Um, I want to give the character of Austin. Roger is amazing at creating new characters. He did it on As the World Turns. He, you know, he came back and reclaimed Todd. He brought Todd to General Hospital. 
he made Franco his own, and now he's playing with with Austin. I want to give Austin a little more time, and I think if they decide to go the route with a triangle with Maxi and Britt, that would be awesome. Um, if not, then I don't really see where else Austin can go, and you're right. Maybe it's time to let him go. As far as Michael Easton is concerned, um, I don't think ABC that loves seen... Michael Easton. ABC loves Michael Easton. We all love Michael Easton. I don't think we've seen all of what Finn, um, all of what Finn is about at this point. I, I think there's a lot more story to tell with Finn. I would be, I would be very upset if Michael went anywhere. Um, Roger Howarth, I, I want to give Austin a little bit more time, but I agree with you. If, if they don't put him in a really good story soon, then it was a. Then why did you kill off Franco in the first place? Find a, a cure to the brain tumor okay. and, and be done with it. Yeah. Willie, what about you? Um, I agree with you, Nathan, that, um, yeah, it, I love Roger Howard at Austin. And, again, like David said, he's quirky and fun. But also, um, I agree again, if you can't do the writing for this character and for the actor, then let him go and just let it be. Because, um, and with Finn, oh, um, I love Michael Easton. But again, if they can't do the writing, then maybe it's time to just let him go for a little bit, and you can always bring him back later. Just don't kill him off. My question for no. Nathan, real quick, is how does he feel about Drew and Carly uh, pairing together? Are you for it or against it? Nathan, are you still with us? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I was distracted. Oh. Well, Willie asked you, what did you, you, what do you think yeah. of, go ahead, Willie. What do you think about the pairing between Drew and Carly on General Hospital? Are you for it or against it? Um, to be honest, I'm kind of for it and I'm kind of against it because at the same time, while I do think that there is some chemistry between both Cameron Matheson and Laura Wright, I do think that having Drew with Carly is a is a downgrade for the character of Drew because yes. with Billy uh, Billy Miller's Drew, I do think that you know I don't think he would be with Carly in my opinion. I think he would at least be on be on his own really because Carly can Carly is Carly, uh, but I do think that at some point you know uh, Carly may have to put herself first and grow up in a way. I think this version of Drew could be the one for her. But then again, I just don't see uh, Carly and Drew lasting that long because we all know that deep down one day, Carson will reunite. Will return. Whether people like her or not. Yes. Okay, I got to weigh in here too because I think um, – I think I wish Candace was here because Candace would agree with me wholeheartedly. They destroyed – absolutely destroyed the character of Drew before Billy left. And what they brought back is nothing. It is not recognizable in one shape or form to the Drew that left. And if they gave psychological trauma or, you know, he was tortured and abused and, and they rescued him and he's got to find his way back, et cetera, as an explanation as to why, you know, Cameron Matheson's – and I love Cameron. I really do. But – this was a this Drew does absolutely nothing for me. I, I he doesn't he doesn't connect the right way with anyone on canvas. This this was a this was a waste of an incredible actor. If you were not going to write a really good storyline to bring him back, this was just such a bad waste, bad move, et cetera, all the way around. Um, and I do not think pairing him with Carly is is gonna is gonna redeem the Drew character enough that we're going to care enough about him. We all know it's a place filler until Jason gets back. We all want to see the, the, yes, the triangle between yeah. J- yeah. if Jason um, gets and back. I'm, I'm curious to know, we, we, got, um, we, we got spoilers that Trevor um, St. John was coming to General Hospital. Did we ever hear anything else? To, what happened to that? I haven't heard anything else. Same here. I thought, nothing, I thought I Trevor was going to come in. 
you know, Monica Monica is is planning the memorial service, which when the heck is that going to happen? I mean, you, you know, but anyway, I digress. You know, I thought, boom, they were going to find Jason, and he was going to be disfigured or whatever, and it was going to turn out to be Trevor Noah so that they could keep uh, Trevor um, St. John. St. John. So they keep, yeah, Trevor St. John, so they could keep the character going. I would have been – I don't think Trevor St. John – is really a, a Jason replacement, but I would have given it a chance. Um, but as far as Ryan, you know, Ryan uh, Matheson playing, it's just not working. It is not working. And, and it, it, a flirtation of romance with Carly is not going to make it work. I was just talking to somebody about that too. A bunch of other fans, we all kind of feel that if this was going to happen like this, they really didn't need to bring Drew back. They could have bring. They could have made Cameron Madison a new character, and I could have seen him being paired like with, um, oh, Jordan, Jordan from the um, police yeah, department. That was but, my um, too. That was my too. Really choice did. too. Yeah. But Drew with yeah, Jordan they ruined bringing because, him back. Yeah. Yeah, and my thinking was, my thinking was that Laura and Cameron make a good match. I think they have chemistry, but he shouldn't be Drew. Well, you know, this all happened because years and years and years ago, ABC did that crossover commercial event between yeah, the what if. shows where, right, where yeah. soap where, characters met each other in elevators, et cetera, et cetera. And they did. Yeah. They do have good chemistry. I'll give them that. But the way that they're but writing they didn't the have character to bring him as Drew. Yeah, yeah, they didn't exactly. have to bring him as Drew. And then the other part, well, too, they, is the fact that um, – that, it's not going to work between Carly and Drew because Carly always brings up Jason. How are you going to have a relationship with anybody if you keep talking about the brother? Well, honestly, that actually would would give it a couple of good layers. At some point, you know, he would pull back and say, do you love me for me? Or am I, you know, the, the alternate exception, you, you know, the acceptable <laughs> exception because you can't have yeah. Jason. Yeah. You know, that that's part twisted. would be interesting to play I feel out. bad for Drew, but, but that's twisted. Yeah, that's true. But the Drew that left had, he had fire. He had, he had muscle. He had energy. He, you know, Cameron plays this don't yeah. be good boy. It works with Ryan when he was Ryan on All My Children. But that's not who Drew was. Drew lost the son. Drew was in love with with Kim. Drew was in love with it, 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 the Drew that came back is nothing, nothing like the character that left. And Drew, and Drew was a family man, and nothing on Cameron, but he's come back as Drew. The moments with the kids, but not enough that he's shown to be the true family man that they wanted to to believe that he is. Yeah. I'm like, I can't buy right. it. It it just doesn't work. Anthony, what's your thoughts? Yeah. What are my thoughts on what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting the voice of this. Up. Is it is it David? We need to get David's perspective on what we're doing with the this Carly and Drew situation in Austin. Yeah, I spoke. So it's David. If David, yeah. we need David, and then we can go over to Young and Restless because I got to go with a yeah, few minutes. Like I said, like I said, Laura and Cameron have good chemistry together. I like them together, but he shouldn't be Drew. If he is anybody but Drew. All because of what you said. Um, yeah, the writers. I mean, I really, really was so excited when I heard Cameron was coming, but then when I heard that he Me was too. playing Drew, I wasn't. It's it's like a balloon. The air went out the balloon. I'm like, oh come on, GH, you could have done way better. All right, uh, I have a couple you know. questions, and I'm gonna have to go. So you guys are gonna have to carry them on the rest of mostly by yourselves. But I have a couple questions. Does anybody yep. in Genoa City know that Deacon is in Los Angeles right now? That's a good question. I don't think so. I, I did I miss anything, Willie? No. Does anyone? No, no, they don't. No, okay, that's a good question. If you recall, Nikki Newman, when she was when Deacon made her believe that she killed Diane, and supposedly the people in Genoa City have taken to believe that Deacon is still behind bars. They don't even know that he's free from jail yet. Okay, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know either. Yeah, that's what yeah, you know, Young and the Restless, I'm, I'm going to say this before I go tonight. 
Young and the Restless, yeah. you know, you guys have dropped the ball so many times. I love you. I'm hanging on. I want to stay with you. But you dropped the ball so many times. I have to, you know, Lauren and Eric are friends. They have been friends for years. Jack, um, um, uh, uh, Jack and um, Jack and what's his name on Bold and the Beautiful. There are so many connections between the Bold and the Beautiful. The fact that the people Jack in Jack Eric, the City do Jack not know Bill? that Bill, Bill, and Bill and Bill crossed over exactly. And Sally, and Sally is the main character now. The fact that the people in yeah. Genoa City do not know that Sheila and Deacon are back, you know, in Los Angeles, it makes no kind of sense to me. Neither does this whole resurrecting. Now, I personally, oh, I loved Susan Walters as Diane. I loved Maura West, but I love Maura West in anything she does. They wrote Diane over the top with Maura, but Maura handled it. So this whole resurrection Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Anthony, there has got to be. Anthony, do you remember? There has got to be an amazing payoff Victor, for this. Anthony, you remember when Victor threw Diane out of the out of the ambulance? Oh yeah. yeah. I yeah. do. I yeah. Thanks to Willie, he showed me. I said. <laughs> and I couldn't. Was I couldn't. So with Deacon oh is just more or less deserves an Oscar for that. That was amazing. All right, Willie, David, and Nathan, thank you. Nathan, thank you so much for calling in. Um, We will be back next week with a very special episode. I have got to run. I have another commitment tonight. I'm so sorry that I have to leave early. But, guys, take take us out with Young and the Restless, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Anthony. Anthony All right, David. Okay, why not? Nathan, Nathan, I hope you stay on for the rest. Yeah, so I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm glad to have you aboard. All right. Okay. You want to start with Diane? Sure oh, thing. Go ahead, uh, Will. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we don't oh, have much. Diane, okay. Everybody yes. thought that Diane was dead, and she's come back, and supposedly she's saying that she's, she's back so she could be reunited with Kyle. But there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. So get ready. It's going to be crazy. It is. Oh, my and God. David, I didn't... Did you already see the promo? Did you see the promo for next week? No, I did oh. not. Is Kyle back? No, this is going to be bigger than that. As you, we, we all know, Jordy has already been announced as leaving YNR, right? Right. Okay, get ready because next week, and Nathan was about this too, um, there's going to be a car crash that affects many people in Genoa City in a major way. Mm hmm. And we know one and of them. You know where it's going from there. So I don't spoil too much, but just put piece of it all together and you'll see where they're going with this. I, I'm very it's a good one. Be a car I feel pilot. very upset about this. Thing. Okay, so you know about it. Because I heard yeah, I it's, heard it's, his it's podcast. Short. Okay, okay. Then you then you already know what's gonna be kind of expected to happen. Yeah, uh, uh it makes me sad because I, I like I I'm probably in the minority. Maybe Anthony's with me, but I always liked Sharon and Ray. Sad. I swear I'm gonna cry when I see the episode. I enjoyed Jordy as Ray. He was fun, and even if he wasn't there with Sharon, I saw the chemistry coming with him and Chelsea, and I was getting excited. And I'm like, oh my god, they had to kill Ray. They could have just sent him out of town or put him on a mission like they did with Chase or Kim. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to kill him off. I mean, it's just it's nonsense. No, they don't have to. Nathan, how are you I feeling agree. about Ray? Um, you know, I got to say, I love Joy Real Suso as uh, yeah. Ray, but I do think that, you know, because from the start, you know, there was some intrigue and some uh, mystique with the character, but I think along the way, 
especially when they put in with Sharon. I think that this was after, I think, Josh Cooper came on. I thought that the character has been uh, increasingly uh, stale, sadly. And uh, especially when uh, they were they were teasing Adam and Sharon almost every time, and the character of Ray almost could never you know, catch a break. And I felt that yeah. uh, they should have at least broken up after, you know, that whole thing settled because um, – to me, I think that Sharon had more chemistry with Adam than with Ray, unfortunately. I mean, there was some there in the beginning, but then it just faded away, I think, once Mark Gorson came on as uh, Adam for me. So I will miss Joy Velasquez overall as Ray, but I do think that the character, uh, for me, it, it, will not be, it will not be missed. But I do wish the best for Jordy on another soap opera or a primetime show or whatever. But, you know... A big disappointment with uh, Y&R, with the character of Ray. You know, a lot of us at Days of Our Lives fans, we would love to see uh, Jordy return as Dario. Oh, yes, I would. Yeah. I'd like to see Jordy anywhere. Oh, yes, yes. You know, even the writers, uh, I don't know if you knew this, David, but uh, um, Nathan here, he's also a fanfic writer like I am, and we write awesome stories, um, but come up with amazing ideas to put Jordy in one of the soap operas. It's amazing what we can pick up, right? Right, Nathan? Absolutely. We have fun doing those fan fics and, and writing and stuff. And, you know, our ideas, you know, currently beats the writers for the soaps as of right now. But that's just me. Yeah. But I agree. I'm going to miss Jordy. Jordy, we're going to miss you. But I agree, it's sadly to say. Uh, Ray's character was written into a corner, and it's just crazy. It's sad. And while we're on the topic, I want to bring up that I'm very disappointed, Wynar, that you can't do better for Michelle Morgan's character as Amanda. She seems like she's always got to be propped to do a character storyline, like whether it's with Phyllis at the, at the hotel or with Devon. Why can't she just get her own story, something better than what we had to go through with that crazy father situation. David, what do you think? Yeah, they definitely should get um, Michelle Morgan's character uh, a little more centralized um, because they dropped the ball with the whole thing with her grandfather and that. I would. I wanted to see more court scenes. I wanted to see her in court. I wanted, I wanted to see where it was going, but they just dropped it. It's like, well, when you write off screen like that, and Nathan again could say it, it ruins the whole story. Absolutely, yes, I, I agree. It's just, it's just frustrating for me because the the family that Amanda had was very interesting, and I loved uh, the grandfather. I mean, he was he was almost Victor Newman-ish to me. When you look at the writing for his uh, character, exactly. and I, I do think that unfortunately um, we did not like 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 uh, like you said, David. We didn't get to see the court scenes. We we didn't get to see any of that. And I felt that this story, that so much more could have been done. I mean, to me, and this is just my opinion, it's my theory. I don't I don't think the grandfather did uh, did any, did. Uh, did try to kill Richard. I think he was trying to cover up for someone else, in my opinion, or try to cover up for um, his daughter. But but anyway, um, you know, I just have to say that uh, with the character of Amanda, you know, it's just disappointing. I feel so bad for Michelle Moore because she is getting wasted, in my opinion, for the, the writing for a character of Amanda. And I do like the character of Amanda. I just feel that more could have been done. But I feel that they need to, like, like you said, David, Centralize the character, and I would, I would, in my opinion, I know this is going to upset some uh, the Amanda fans, but I do think they need to break up Devon and and Amanda and move Amanda on to someone else. Maybe I don't know, maybe Billy Abbott and break him up with Lily. That's just me. Well, I'm sure you're not alone. Um, well, I can. I think I don't think everybody should be together. On a soap anyway, maybe some are better by themselves for a while. Well, I can tell you right now, just a little tease, 
I know a lot of people aren't happy with JG, you know, being behind too much. But I can tell you this is a surprise. Get ready because a lot of couples are going to be playing another round of musical chairs of switching partners. It's going to be crazy. You know how these musical chairs, you switch partners? It's going to get crazy. Yes, I know that. It's been a while. Well, how about that was really nice. Yeah, so what, before we take off, what is working on YNR right now? Um, You know what? As crazy as it is, and it's just me, I've actually enjoyed this whole craziness with um, Ashlyn going out of his mind of who's trying to frame him. I know a lot of people right. aren't liking it, but I'm enjoying it because Robert – with it, Robert Newman is playing perfect, playing this part where he's so confused and hurt and upset, and I love it because first he was mad at Victor, but thanks to Victoria, she's made it, turned it around, and says, it's not my dad, it's Adam. It's like, oh my God, yes, this kid is good. Nathan, David, how do you feel about this? Um, I'm waiting to see. I think um. The kettle is starting to boil over a little bit in him, but he's keeping it at a simmer. Uh, do you for think me, that he loves Victoria, or do you think he really just used this since day one? God, um, I think, and that it's so twisted. I I can't even decipher if he was ever telling the truth at all. I get it. That's what Sharon said on on a recent episode. Remember, Nathan? She said, "I yes, can't." Yeah, I remember that. This man. All he does is lie. Yes, I remember that very, very clearly. And and, and um, you know, it's it's sad overall because I think that uh, Victoria really did love Ashlyn, but I do think that she was just blinded to what. Um, uh, blinded to what Ashlyn really was, in my opinion. I do hope that. Once this whole thing slows down, that Victoria, you know, you know, does take some time off or tries to recoup and refocus because, to me, I think Victoria has to be moving forward. She has to be better and smaller than that. I mean, she's a woman after all. I mean, you know, so I just hope that, um, you know, for Victoria that she learns from this and just moves on. Yeah, I do too. Well, Nathan, I got to tell you, it's been great having mm-hmm. you on again for joining us, and, um, and it's really special that we get people calling and they want to join in. It's it doesn't happen all that often. Yeah, Nathan. So I you thank you. Welcome to call in. Yeah, um, I've got a quick question thank for you. both of you. Here we go. As you all know, on today's episode of Young and the Restless, you we all saw how um, not I'm thinking sharing. We all saw how Sally came into the office of of Adam, the way she was dressed. Do you agree with me here? I kind of odd. Don't you think that's a little unprofessional of her dressing up like that in the office? Yeah, a little bit. She yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Oh, we got ninety seconds, guys. So I gotta say good night to you. All right, thank and you, everybody. It's we'll be back always next a pleasure. Week. Thanks again, Nathan. Thank Thanks, you so Nathan. much. I'm, I'm glad I called in. Thank you. You're All welcome. Right. Bye bye. Get connected with Take Two Radio bye. on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadio.com.